Right, just setting off up a trail. The inlet to uh, to Bull Pond is literally just up there on the road. The uh, road sign is just there. And the trail, by the look of it, heads down here. It's the only thing I can actually see that even resembles a trail. So it's only just, not quite sunrise o'clock yet. So it, uh, I will take this as being the trail and I will wander up here and see what I can find. Right, I'll do some more in a bit. Yes, it would seem that this is the trail. It is currently still a little bit darker clock, so this is either a good trail or a, a cattle trail. I'm not sure which, but it does head in the direction that I wish to go, which unfortunately is up. Yeah, so as always, in the mountains everywhere I go is always up. So, oh, I haven't secured my keys yet. I have a little trick for you here. Always when you're hiking, just have a little carabiner. A friend of mine showed me this. Just hook everything on with a carabiner. It's that, that way. It, uh, I don't have to spend four hours looking for my keys. Should I drop them? As you can see, it's pretty dark. I'm not sure how well this uh, camera will pick up this. But hopefully pretty good. Right. A lot darker than it looks. <coughs> He says as he trips over, I say, oh, here's my first bit of up. So I will put this away until I get to the top of here. The things I find on the trail, clearly somebody's been improving this corner. This is a very nice trail so far. It's obviously been very recently cleared, so that's good. There's a, a nice bench cut out here, and uh, I think somebody left that behind. I think they'll be back to collect that. I think this is a trial in progress, which is great. I like to see this. This is really good. Well, this trial has obviously been very freshly recut because the, uh, I see why the axes, or the pickaxe was down there. They've recently recut all this. This is very recent work. And I have to say, this is a very nice little trial. I can see this one becoming very popular. Yeah. Normally if I do the uh, last bridge, oh, here we go, more tools. Yeah. <laughs> this is obviously a work in progress. Excellent. Nice to see it. I know there was a trail up through here in the past. But the, uh, it was kind of overgrown and hard to find because it kind of went straight up there. But, yes. Clearly they have crews out here working this weekend or well, very recently so this is all very soft ground still so the more foot traffic we get the more this will get dug in looks like they're ready to dig this section out across here too that's good right it's very well marked i thought there might be a bunch of deadfall up in here to clear out but there isn't so that's good so i will continue on up the top and see what i find very nicely done well, this trail keeps heading up and it's been very recently cleared, so that's very nice. Look at that. Somebody's cut all it out. There is some older bear crap here. A little bit there, a little bit there, some more there. So, there's only a little bear, but a little bit. <laughs> but somebody has very recently cut all this out. Look at that. I think that's why this northern approach wasn't really used that much because it was a bit hard to find. <laughs> the southern end. The way I normally go up uh, Lusk uh, Creek and up Hunchback Hills is from the far end of this one. But uh, this is actually very nice. Other than all the up, of course. The relentless up. But the good way to look at up is on the way back, it's all down. Look at this. Somebody's cleared all this out. Very recently too. These are all fresh saw cuts. It's very well marked. It's been daisy chained with tape all the way up through here, I suspect just to get the trail established which is fine because once it is you, know, you can take some of this tape down but at the moment it's uh, clearly marking the way up through the forest whoever did this did a very nice job I like this <laughs> this is good right I will have a quick water break and then I will continue on my upwardness right, finally the sun is coming up 
I've just stopped at a little clearing bit. It kind of zigzags up this hill, comes across this open rocky area here. It's obviously a gully. There's, uh, I can see a lot of water down through here. And the trail continues across that way and up through there. Yeah, I can actually see this becoming quite a popular route. It's a little steep in places, and it, uh, but there's lots of like little level bits and slightly downhill bits just to recoup for the steep up bits. But it, uh, I suspect uh, looking at the hills the other side, I know I have quite a bit more up to go yet up there somewhere. Yeah. So uh, I will continue on this way and see what I find. Okay, sunrise o'clock. Whew, this is steep. <sighs> yeah, this part of the trail has not been cut in yet. They've cut all the logs off it. They've cleared the route. But, oh my goodness, see, they've just cleared all this, which is great. And the building zigzags up the hill, which is always nice. But, uh, oh, I'd be glad when this leg burning up has finished. Oh dear. Coming in from the other end, if you come into Hunchback Hills from the, uh, what would that be, the south end I guess, off a of powder face trail, that's actually uh, not too bad. There's a couple of steep bits in there, but this is steeper. Well, you've got to gain, whichever way you go, you've got to gain the elevation. It's as simple as that. And uh, you can either have a long, slow climb, or you can have a steeper climb for a shorter distance. And this seems to be the steeper climb for the shorter distance. So. Apparently, according to Tani's blurb in the um, Canonescus page there, uh, this is moderate. <laughs> Remind me not to do any trails that he describes as strenuous. <laughs> strenuous, I think, is hands and feet. That's where I was the other week. Hands and feet in blazing sunshine. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's too much for me. Yeah, This is just about right, actually. This is uh, the steep bits, then there's resting spots, the steep bits. Looking up here... I think I might be able to look out through the trees in a minute, which uh, from the top of these hills I know is a fantastic view, which is the reason I've come up here. I mean, you're walking through forest on the way up here, and as you can see, it's only just been cleared. They've literally just cleared this and marked it. But it's, uh, I can tell you now, it, uh, the views from the top of this hill are really quite something. So that's why I'm up here. Right, let's head on outwards, and uh, I'll do some more when I stop for my next... Uh, catch my breath break <laughs> okay stop for another rest <laughs> there's a long straight piece that comes up through here which is uh... oh dear yeah long and straight <laughs> there's another bit up through here which uh, I think I see some big rocks up in there oh yeah I see some boulders oh, that's interesting let's go have a look at those yeah. Oh. I'm sure if somebody was 20, they could probably run up this hill, but not me. It does seem to be kind of cresting, and the angle of attack seems to be slightly lower. But I have learnt in the past that quite often those things just lull you into a full sense of easiness. Oh. Tell you what, there's a lot of firewood in there. Look at that lot. <laughs> you were camping up in here, there'd be no shortage of firewood, is it? It's everywhere. <laughs> but it's actually pretty important for the uh, forest floor, so. Oh dear. Wow. Yep. This is a trouble as you get older. You know, in my head I'm still 20 something. But in reality I'm actually 60 something, or just about. Yeah. Not quite yet, but damn close. <laughs> That's a nice big rock. Look at that. Yeah, so if you're coming up this trail, you get to this rock. Yeah, we've got a rock ridge along the side of there. Might be interesting to have a look up over that. Might do that on the way down. See what's over there. But once you get to this rock, it does seem to be uh, flattening out a little bit. I suspect, looking at this trail, it goes up round to those rocks anyway. The uh, trail has been copiously marked with flagging tape, which is actually really good. Look at it, it's everywhere. 
but uh, once the trail becomes established you can take some of that tape down but otherwise people get lost on the trail and uh, there are holes in the hills up here these, these are uh, these hills you'd be surprised how many holes in that there are in these hills or things you could fall off things you really don't want to have happen to you on the trail so when you get to this rock I think I'm going to swing up around the corner and looking up through the trees I can see daylight so maybe I'll get a view when I get up there I'll let you know as soon as I get there okay it didn't swing round as much as I thought it may do in a minute I'm not sure the uh, that rock up the top there right smack in the middle of the shot I'm going to call that monkey face rock or dragon face rock because it looks like mouth nose eyes absolutely perfect if I had a zoom lens on this thing I could zoom right in on that but literally right smack in the middle there I'll see if I can get a better picture of that on the way down but at the moment I'm still on the climb up this is a much more gentle up I've just come up here as you can see this piece of trail this may be part of the old trail because it was originally a trail up here but it, uh, it kind of got a bit overgrown and what have you called a deadfall and they did a bunch of logging up in the top of here so it, uh, the, the other end route the southern end route if you like is uh, the most popular route that people take but that road's only open for part of the year over the winter that road is not open however this one is so oh, i stop here for a bit there's a nice band of rocks all the way up this side so on the way down I will explore those see what I can find right onwards and uh, yes you guessed it more upwards oh wow this is nice I'm just following this rock band all the way up I have to explore that on the way down it uh, but I've come to a part which I can only describe as flat and by flat I mean less up still up but not as up as steep not as up as strenuous definitely not as up as moderate but uh, still up but my feet are telling me wow this is flat <laughs> that's a bit of a leg burner in places getting up there but I know I'm up on top of the ridge because I've got the, the ridge rock that side and I've got sunshine and nothing but valley down that side so I know I must be extremely close to the top I'm looking at this trail I think I'm about to get some sunshine. Oh, look at that, nice. Yeah. It's a very pleasant walk. It's a slow walk. Oh, it is at my age. Everywhere's a slow walk at my age now. Oh. Yes. And this is the actual rock ridge. The trail goes off to my left. But I'm just gonna have a sit on this rock up here and see what I can see yeah see there's this great big ridge rock ridge runs right along looking at that side though doesn't look like you can actually see much out there which is good because it means the forest is still good yeah but as you can see this ridge runs all the way up along so I think I know exactly where this is on the map so uh, I've explored a lot of these ridges there's a lot of them around here loads of them some are quite famous got big trails up them and some not so much and this one is uh, kind of in a not so much category right let's get back onto the trail apologies for the slow plod <laughs> but this is the reality I don't do fancy videos I had somebody moan at me the other day that my videos weren't exciting I don't do uh, my videos that I do are for people to come along on my day and visit places that maybe they wouldn't or find new places that they didn't know were there and now can come and visit like up here now I'm up the top of this piece it's actually very very nice the uh, the first part of it is steep no question it's steep but there's a lot of places to stop a lot of zigzags they're building a new trail by the look of it a lot of zigzags in it which is always nice yes you walk a little bit further but it's way easier on the legs <laughs> but this is actually really nice up here I can see the trees up in the top here these are going into more uh, the higher alpine kind of trees they're different I don't know what the species is but uh, they're shorter 
they don't grow as fast. So uh, that's my trail. So I will follow it and see where it goes. Right, and on I go. This next part of the trail is a little rockier. It's not too bad. Very easy to follow. Again, the uh, tape is well marked. I can see a lot of old cuts. See these? These are very old cuts. So this is the original trail. I'm sure it is. But the uh, over time, this end, this approach, the northern approach, as I call it, uh, didn't get used as much. There was so much deadfall down the bottom that it actually made it quite hard to find this piece of trail. And it's all been kind of overgrown and not used much. But it doesn't take long for a trail not to be used before it becomes completely overgrown. That's why it's important to walk these trails. That's why I've come up here today. I saw this in uh, Tony and Julian's book there on their website page, the Kananaskis Trails. And I thought, oh, I've done the south route. Oh God, I can't even tell you how many times I've done that route. And it uh, brings you out to a very nice location where you can look out over Barrier Lake and all the rest of it. And you can turn that route into a giant horseshoe back on the Powderface Trail. But this route would make a very nice in and out. Oh dear. I know I'm getting up there because the trees are getting shorter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you look at these trees over on this side, let's get out through this side. They're really tall trees, like the 150 foot trees are way down the valley. As you can see, these are only 50, 60 feet maybe. Some of those over there are even shorter. Yeah. And the forest thins out too. This is as, this bit I'm walking on now is as close to flat as you could get. <laughs> so yes, it's a little bit of pain on the the legs on that first piece of trail, and uh, that's no different than if you come in from the south. If you come in from the south, it's exactly the same. It's uh, you got steep bits, and you got uh, like long, shallow, rocky bits. A lot of squirrels up in here, I've noticed. So if you look at the saw cuts on these logs and we've got different colour marking tape up in here now too lots in pink, orange and red <laughs> yeah yeah maybe they run out of orange <laughs> yeah that orange tape they're using down the bottom is good quality tape when it comes to marking tapes there's a lot of difference in quality there really is yeah oh yeah this is very pleasant this bit actually reminds me of um, 70 Buck, going up 70 Buck Hill. Anybody that's done 70 Buck, this top piece here very much reminds me of that. Rocky Ridge on one side, nice flattish, slightly bouldery trail up there, the middle of it. And I'll tell you what, it's very pleasant, very pleasant indeed. I did look to see if there was a way that you could take a route along the top of those uh, rocks on the way up but there isn't really which I suspect is why the route doesn't go that way yeah this is older pink tape I see but, yes down in that valley over there somewhere if you look in one of Tony's books he'll tell you there's a uh, some remains of an old plane crash just a few bits and pieces down in there not much but I did try to research it but I couldn't find any information on it uh, down in there somewhere. I'm sure if you read through one of Tony's books there it'll uh, give you more information there. I can't remember which book it's in now. It's in one on. Yeah. I've got them all at home pretty much. There's a new one out. I haven't got the new one yet. I really should do that. Need to order that. Yeah. The last time I went out to buy a, a hiking book and what have you it was Bruce Sawalski's uh, Alberta Survival book. And on the way out there, driving out to Canmore to pick it up, because it was the only place at the time that I actually had it, it uh, I did a rather spectacular 360 on the road on sheet ice in a 90 degree, very, very strong wind. It's in one of my videos there. Yeah, that was scary. It's ironic. I went out to buy a survival book and uh, ended up having to use survival skills training on the uh, my driving skills. Yes. Good job I did those courses, eh? Yes. <laughs> if you ever want to do something that's really worthwhile that you think you're never going to use but you actually do, 
and the time you need it you're really glad you did do a, a winter driving course like how to drive on snow and ice what to do when the shit hits the fan basically but uh, trust me it's worth it I did mine years ago and uh, very glad I did right I'm gonna put this away stop rabbiting on and just enjoy this forest for a bit all right I did find a little Y junction back there and the the turn off to the left with the orange tape seem to be heading back down the hill and I don't want to go down I want to go up and I know that where I'm looking for is kind of that way the sun's over there so I know what I'm looking for is over this way so uh, there's still pink tape here so I'm following the pink tape now because the orange tape seemed to go down unless they're making a, a new loop trail maybe there are rocks it's nice eh? unless they're making a loop trail down through there I don't know but uh, this is the pink tape that I'm following. There's a whole bunch of little cans along here as well. So, uh, this is, you can see, this is a much older trail. The cuts. So, I will continue going this way because I know that this is the way I need to go. Not sure where that other orange tape goes. Maybe it heads back down and they've made a loop trail. I don't know. But it, uh, I know I didn't want to be going down because if I go down, I've got to come back up. <laughs> Done enough up already today. So, I'm just kind of following this along. The, uh, I keep seeing, like I say, little cans and there's a piece of pink tape up there. Lovely rocks. Love these rocks like this. There's a bit of pink tape up there, so I'm suspecting I need to be up there. How did they get up there? Around this way, I suspect. Oh, that's a big step. I'm sure there's a better route. Oh, yes, that side looks a bit better. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Right. Ah, interesting. Because now I've got across to here, I can see some of that orange tape again. Interesting. Right, this is where they've uh, recently done some logging up in here. Last few years. And I know where I'm going. Let's see if I can point on camera. Where I'm going is approximately up there. That's where I'm heading to. So get to here I've got to kind of find my way across this as I've said before anytime you come to a clearing always stand there wait a while make some noise let anything know that's in the clearing that you're there I think I'm just going to kind of cut across that way it seems to be see there's that orange tape that's that good quality orange tape is there again so uh, I need to check to see where that other bit of tape goes because I'm not sure that's correct but follow the pink tape because I, I know that that hill over there if you go see if I can do it the uh, if you go that hill you can actually go all the way along this ridge up over that hill over that side and then if you head south pretty much dead south along there it's kind of in a, a sweeping round to the left arc if you like that will take you to the part of Hunchback Hills where most people go this is the east end all right, so uh, where I'm going is up the top of there. So I will head straight across this uh, clear-cut bit here, I suspect, and then up the hill. That glorious day. Look at that, the view's over that way. Can't see Calgary because it's a little bit hazy and I'm a little bit too far around in the, the bush here. So it, uh, I can see all kinds of hills that I recognize down through there. That's good. Yeah, and then uh, I'm going up there. So I'll let you know when I get across there. Now I'm gonna do some points here that people might notice way out in the distance over there I can see the the road all the dust coming off it the meadowy bit that's down in the bottom there that is the big meadow that you can see um, from the Sibold lookout those hills over there that's Deer Ridge the first hill then the second hill and it goes off up the valley Eagle Hill is up over right about there somewhere yeah Right past that tree, I suspect. Yeah, but the haze is a bit much at the moment. It's very hard to see. What an amazing place! Yeah, over this side, that hill up the top of there. If you go along that ridge up past that hill and basically keep going south in a big arc, that will take you right round. And then we have the, the mountains over that way. You can see the orange flagging on the far side of there for the route across. 
and uh, there seems to be a little bit of a, a walked trail across here kind of through the brush so the more people that walk it the more it becomes established and uh, becomes a very nice trail I can clearly see where people have been walking through here so <laughs> which is good I keep seeing little cans everywhere as well so that's really nice to see well done for all those people that actually mark a trail yeah and I'm going to head on up through those trees over there well uh, I have to stop for a while here look at that now, that's a bit of a long climb up here but worth every step look at it lovely isn't it right over in the middle of the picture over there that's Yates Mountain that's where everybody goes up Barrier Lake uh, lookout is up at the bottom there I can just see the piece of cliff gives a really good view of the uh, Yates Mountain I can just about see the fire lookout on the top looking out along here Yamnuska Mountain is right over there that's all the rock is over there that's heading off up the ghost region up that way I can actually see traffic out that way on the Trans Canada Highway yeah I'm just gonna do a quick spin around here Apologies for the sun. Wow. This is this is the thing. I mean, people say about clear cut the forests. This timber's been used. I mean, it, it, this is what builds people's houses. It's what builds the fences in your garden. This is what builds all the stuff that you like to build. The wood's got to come from somewhere. So if you have sustainable forests, it, uh, it, I can see all the way down through this valley where pieces have been cut in the past and clear cut, and it's all regrown. But that's the whole idea. Everywhere I'm looking in amongst these trees, I can see new trees coming out the ground. There's new trees, new shrubs, everything. It's all sprouting out of everywhere. And that's what happens. You let the light hit the ground, nature does the work for you. The secret is to manage it in a good plan. Sustainable forest harvest is actually a good thing. Because if you uh, just let the forest all grow old and die because everybody wants to see the trees live forever, it, uh, you'll find that you just end up with a big mess on the ground which eventually catches fire and then nature does this anyway nature will clear it out but uh, then all the wood goes to waste and it uh, doesn't really do a great deal but all up through here you'll see there's all kinds of plants and this must have been really nice in fireweed season look at it all down through there all this like silvery stuff that you can see that's all the fireweed seeds that's for next year's fireweed so next year up here this will just be bright red pinky purple up through here beautiful absolute amazing habitat for insects and animals and stuff there's food here in a really dense forest like you pick that dense forest over there right there's no food in there for animals next to nothing unless you're a squirrel there ain't a lot in there for you you know but out here where the sun can get to it and it all regrows let me tell you this is important habitat all this dead wood on the ground all this slash and what have you yeah it's a bit of pain in the ass to walk over at times however i can tell you now it all rots away feeds the forest floor and that's the next generation of forest right there i keep seeing little see that down in here see that there little conifer coming out the ground they're everywhere literally everywhere i looked there's little conifers coming out the ground it's great this is how forest should be managed right i'm very nearly at the top of the hill i'll do some more when i get up there Deer just gone down through the valley over there, just put the deer out. Yeah. Suddenly saw a large brown thing bouncing over the trees. What is that? <laughs> One thing you can always be certain of, it's not a cat. Because if you see a big brown cat bouncing over trees like that, it's being chased by something even bigger. Because a cat doesn't jump over trees like that, you don't see them. <laughs> yeah, literally went just off down that valley down there somewhere. Quite a big one. Big white tail. Might be some more up in here. <sighs> down through that gap through those trees over there. We just saw Fortress Mountain. And all that lot. Keep stopping to look. Always take the time to stop and look. It, uh, when you're walking on a trail as well always take the time to look back because if you look along this ridge this ridge is the way back down this trail back down through those trees you have to follow this ridge I'll do the down video once I get to the top uh, I'll have to swap out my battery by the time I get to the top of there I suspect this one's pretty much done 
Uh, I was kind of hoping there might be another deer. Sometimes when there's one, there's usually more. Uh, I did hear some noises in the forest on the way up here, which are generally speaking deer. But, uh, Oh dear me, oh dear me, that was almost funny, there we go, <laughs> this bit's really easy to follow, it is this time of the year, once the snow's on the ground, not quite so easy, this is why it's always a good idea to have in your mind the shape of the hills you should be seeing, and more importantly, the shape of the hills you shouldn't be seeing, <laughs> yeah, up over here, off down, those mountains down the side there, the, uh, can't remember the name of that mountain. Fortress and everything is off down that way. You can see Fortress Mountain, that big one that sticks up near. Looks like a big castle. Hence its name, Fortress. Yeah. Uh, what's all that other lot down there? I can't remember now. Ah, Galatee's down that way. It's all part of the Fisher Range, I believe. That all goes down through there. It, uh, over the top of here, that hill right in front of me, up over that way, that's Cox Hill. That's where I was the other week. I was up the top of that one. And way in the distance, with a little pointy thing right on the top, that's Moose Mountain. But I'll do some more when I come uh, on the way down. I keep seeing large dark shapes in here. There's a couple I saw on the way up here. They're just big shadows this time of the day. It's uh, always a good idea to stop and make sure the shadows aren't moving. Right, out there straight ahead of me, is uh, another deer right out across the distance there. I'm not sure if it will come out on this camera. Unless it runs, you won't see it. It's, it's exactly where I need to go. This piece, I've run out of trail on this piece, so this piece is kind of just make it up as you go along kind of trail. These are the kind of places I like to explore. Yeah, that deer is literally straight ahead, right in front of me. It's stopping, keep stopping and looking at me. Thinking, what's that strange looking thing coming up on me? Yeah. <laughs> they can get across this garbage easier than I can. Yeah. I'm not chasing you, little deer. I'm just heading in the same direction you are. Yeah. Right, I better actually pay attention because there's so much stuff here to fall over. Deer's just disappearing off into the bush there. And I'm going to head up around beyond those trees. We've got a whole bunch of deer up here. There's two or three right in that little clump of trees right at the top. They're uh, they're looking like they're about to move. There they go. But, uh, this is what I was saying earlier on. The uh, dense forest. There's not much for these guys to eat. But up here, there's food. That's why they're here. So yes, a nice thick forest full of trees looks absolutely lovely. And it does, until it gets old. And it falls down. Oh, look at that. There's an eagle. Look, down through the valley there. God, I wish I had my decent camera. He's literally just flown out. He's heading down the valley. Unless he turns, we probably won't see him much. Heading down into the trees there. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very nice indeed. Right. Yay, made it. This is the top of the hill. There's a little geocache there in a box. I shall have a look at that in a minute. Just swap out this battery, get this pack off. Watch the deer that are hiding in those trees over there. They think I can't see them, but they're hiding, they're just hiding it. There's about four of them in there. They're just sitting there looking at me now. It, uh, right, swap out this battery, have something to eat. Right, well, I found the geocache. And it would seem that Tony and Gillian were up here uh, literally just last week, September 3rd, 23. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Right, this is a good, this is a nice little geocache. Let's uh, show you what's in here. We got a map in here, which is really, really good. Love to see that. Uh, Gulf Islands, I'm not sure what that's all about. Alberta, all kinds of maps, all kinds of things in here. There are also um, some matches. This is always good. I'd love to see this. Yeah, in case you ever got stuck and you needed to get a fire going. Yeah, there's some supplies in here. Geographic miles on Earth. There's a video. Not sure quite how you play a video up here, but whatever. No, this is good. All right, I will uh, sign the book, put that away, and leave that for the next people to find. Excellent. Well, 
I bought my big saw only for that. I think I might need it for the trial. It done. It is time. <laughs> You're lacking on chairs up here, by the way. <laughs> this big flat rock is about as much as I could find. So I'm going to have my grapefruit. I normally slice my grapefruits. This one's been in my pack a little bit. It's a little soft. So I will peel this one like this. As always, everything's going in my zip box. It's a rather nice spot up here. I've just spotted some orange tape over in that corner over there. I wonder if they're going to uh, route the trail around that way. I must admit, straight across that ridge is a much nicer walk. Maybe because of all this deadfall. Maybe that's why they did that, I don't know. But there's fresh orange tape over that way, so I have a sneaking suspicion the trail's going to come around here. Right. As always, make sure your garbage goes home with you. Don't leave anything like that laying around. Or any foodstuffs laying around. So I did bring my big saw with me today, just in case there was any trail to clear. And there isn't. So that's good. The deer are all sitting over there still, eating away. This rock, it's, uh, I need to talk to the Ministry of Rocks, because this rock is not as comfortable as it could be. Oh look, a flag. Yeah. Now way in the distance, way over that way, there's a clearing right up on top, not this hill, the hill in the distance, there's a clearing over there, right at the top. That's the Hunchback Hill Ridge that most people go to. That's the, I would call that like the South Ridge. That's probably like north and west over that way. But you can actually go from that ridge all the way along. There's a clearing over there where you have to kind of come down the clearing and cross because there's a bit of a cliff up over the top of that one. Then you can come up through this one. But I have to say, I'm suspecting because they're doing the trail and the, the orange tapes over there. I think that's where they want the trail to go. Oh, None of that's been uh, cleared out yet, so it's kind of kind of rough through there. What a great place to stop for lunch. If you can see them on that ridge just over there, the deer sitting there watching me. <laughs> There's three or four of them over there. Hmm. Yeah, that's all Cox Hill over there. The road down in the valley. You can make out the beaver ponds down the bottom. This is nice trails up through here. Now yeah, I'm suspecting that orange tape through there because the way in the distance over there that's where the um, piece was that I cut came out through but this is all slash up through here. This stuff's a pain in the ass to clear. But they seem to be routing the trail down through there. So who knows? Personally, from a hiking point of view, I mean, looking at where they're going, is down that valley, then you've got to go back up that hill over that side to get back into the forest. Well, 
to me, that stand of trees right over there in the middle, that's halfway across, and you just cut across to that piece over there, and, and you're there. Yeah. Hmm. Not sure. Either way, no matter how you get up here, as long as you do, it, uh, what an amazing view. Hmm. I'm enjoying this. Very nice indeed. Yeah. Look at that. Very nice. Whoa. Let's head over this way a bit, see if I can see the beaver ponds any better. Yeah, down in the bottom of the valley down there, there's a whole bunch of beaver ponds. You can just about make out the road down the bottom. I can see all the dust coming off the road. You can see it in the distance. Yeah, I can actually see Calgary way in the distance. There's no point in me pointing at it because it's just a big shape that really doesn't make any sense from here. That is very nice. Yeah. East end of uh, Hunchback Hills. Doesn't get much better than that. Very nice. Right, I shall uh, finish up my lunch and do some more in a bit. Right, time for me to head back down. Like I say, there is a trail over here that looks like it's going to be doing something. And it seems to be the same new orange tape that they've laid out. But if you look at it, come into here. So they've marked it all up through here. But this is pretty darn rough, so I'm suspecting that's the route they're going to make which would go down into the trees and along the bottom. However, and I'm sure once the trail's in there, that should be a nice trail. But once I've gained elevation, I really don't like losing it for no reason. So I'm gonna go back the way I came. And uh, I suspect, because there are several trails that go off here. There is a big Y up in here somewhere that kind of goes left and right. And that could be where I'm at. I don't. Uh, carry GPS and all that other good stuff. Let's just make sure my tools and everything are away. That's away, that's away, that's away. The geocache box. Let's make sure that's all closed up. Don't want any water in there. Yep, that's all good. That's all good. That's all good. Now the way I'm going back is that way. The uh, Got that hill over there. That's the other Hunchback Hill I was referring to. You can just see the clearing on top of the hill over there. That's where most people go. Hunchback Hills, that piece over right there, that's where most people go. And, it, uh, and it's a very nice walk up that end. It really is. But this end is also a very nice walk. Once you've explored that end, I've been up that end. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've been up there. And then you've got this hill. And the way I'm going to go back, there's a clump of trees over there in the distance. So I'm going to walk across this. Once you get over to that clump of trees, um, all this kind of slash garbage just kind of disappears. So I'm going to head that way. Let me just clip this camera on. Everything's on carabiners. Yeah. Right. Nothing left behind. That's all there. That's all there. That's good. That's good. That's good. Tools, pack, gear. Didn't bring a hat. And the deer are still over there. I can see they're all just sitting over there. That's what I was saying earlier. There's food here for them now. And it, uh, whereas before, there wasn't really a lot for them up in here. This piece on the way back across here, if you choose to come back this way, like I say, I think they're actually making a proper trail up through the other way. It looks like they've laid out a route. But to me, that clump of trees over there in the distance, that's where I'm heading for, just that corner. If you head pretty much a dead straight line for there, you have to hop over tree roots and stuff. Not a lot you can do about that. No. It, uh, I can see why they would detour around this because this stuff is real and in the rear end to do anything with. I have tried clearing trails through places like this before, and if you had a, if this was a really really popular trail, you know, like hundreds of people coming up here a week, it would very quickly develop a trail because people find the easiest route. But uh, it wouldn't take long if every person that came up here moved one log or cleared out one bit of little crap and what have you. It, uh, it very quickly turns into a nice walkable trail. But it's actually not bad. There's a couple of bits where there's some clumps of logs like this just coming up here. But 
this is the fun of coming up places like this. These are the places I like to explore. The, the six lane highway trails as I call them. Yeah, you can keep that. I don't like that. I've done them. Obviously when I first moved over here, everybody does the tourist routes, everybody goes to Banff, up to Jasper, and, all that, and they do all those kind of trails. And they are very nice. And there's some amazing places, don't get me wrong, there's some stunning, stunning places. And it, uh, unfortunately, the road up to Moraine Lake is now permanently closed. You have to pay to get on the bus to go up there. And I think it's eight bucks per person. If you go up to uh, Lake Louise, to park at Lake Louise, I think it's 17 bucks to park there. That all used to be free, so I don't go to those places anymore. It, uh, I just don't go there. No point. It, uh, you've got to pay to get in the parks, you've got to pay to drive down the road, you've got to pay to park, you've got to pay to get out the car, you've got to pay to eat. Everything's money, 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 money. And to me, once society goes that way, there's no going back. It, uh, it just deteriorates the quality of life. So I don't bother with it. I just don't go there anymore. Right. Rant and moan over. I will go this way. It's kind of a shame, really, because... I used to like going out there, I'd always stop and have something to eat, or I'd stop and I'd go and stay up at the Bamp Springs or whatever, and you know, so now they lose that tourist trade as well. So now from here, I want to cut across straight across that way. So like follow this ridge. Don't go down the hole, that's where those other deer went. Cut straight across there. And uh, the good news is the big dark shapes that I saw over on the side over there are still there. <laughs> always look for dark shapes so I'm going to cut across this bit I'll be out of this garbage here in a minute but there's so many young trees growing in here I know this stuff's a pain in the rear end to walk through but it's nice to see all the young trees and the fireweed and the plants all coming up through here and as all this stuff breaks down we get the layers of snow on it and then the rain and the snow and the rain and the snow and so on and so on Eventually this all just breaks down into new soil. See, it's thinning out a bit already. And where I'm heading is straight across over there. Right over to that piece over there. So, if you come up here, see, look at all these new conifers. These are all new trees. Trees, 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 trees. Everywhere. Hundreds of them. Yeah. This stuff's a little bit of a pain to walk through, but whatever. <laughs> it's good exploring. Yeah. And if I hadn't walked through this bit, I wouldn't have seen the nice deer that were feeding on the nice plants now. Yeah. Look at that. They cleared out all that lot down through there. Yeah. It wasn't long ago, a couple of years ago, this was all still forest. However, like I was saying earlier, it is grown as a crop. People need to remember that. And if you don't cycle the crop, then you just end up with one big dead forest. Yes, it looks very nice. And then you get a forest fire come through, and then it's just a big mess of crap for years and years and years. But even if you go down to um, Waterton now, where they had the big Kino fire, you want to see how green it is down there now. I've seen photographs recently from down there. Absolutely stunning. This is what's a look at this. Little bits like this, but as soon as I get to those trees over there, I know I'm good. So I only have a little bit more of this to do. as you walk on it, it breaks it all down. Crunches it into nothing. Yeah. It's the new forest floor. The soils up in here are fairly, fairly weak. They're not good deep soils. But look at it. Confers everything. I love it. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I will wait until I get to the clearer bit. Just a bit ahead of me there. And I'll do some more when I get there. So I've just come from... Up over there, down past that little thing, that's where all that scrubby garbage is. Across there, and as you can see, this is now a much clearer looking pathway. And what you're going to do is cut straight down along this ridge and into those trees just over there on that side. That'll take you back into the forest. And I'm going to explore those rocks on the way down too. See, the trail that they've marked for the other bit goes down that side. Unless they're redoing all the trails, because there is a trail actually that heads directly uh, like east of here that goes all the way down that way. 
So maybe that's what that is. I don't know. I didn't go that way because I know it's taking me in the wrong direction. This is the way you want to come. Down here. See Yates Mountain over there, that little pointy one with the sheer drop off. That's Yates Mountain. The big dark shape that I was looking at as I was coming up across the meadow is still there, so that is good. <laughs> you can see the road down the bottom. It gives you an idea of the elevation. That is actually a pretty wide road. That road in terms of lanes is about six lanes, including the, the bit on the side, the shoulders and what have you. Uh, that would be equivalent of about five or six lanes wide if you put cars in a row. So it is actually a big forestry road. Yeah. And as you can see, this is the uh, down the bottom there. Let's see if I can do that. That's the road down the bottom. That valley that goes off up that way takes you up to Eagle Hill. In the distance over there, right over, let's see if I can point to it, right over about there. That is Eagle Hill, and that's where a lot of people go. That's a big, that's a very nice hike down through there. Lovely walk down through there. Yeah, you can get up on the top of that hill. But uh, well, this is nice, eh? Look at this. And I think this is probably. I know they're building a route down there, but I don't know why I'd want to go all the way down that slope and then all the way back up here. Maybe that's a, a back way down. I don't know. Because there are several trails up here. There's about four or five trails that go along this entire ridge. But as you can see where I'm walking now, this is uh, pretty darn clear right across this ridge. And into those trees the other side of there, that's where the uh, pink tape starts. And that's what I was following. But, uh, look at this. All I've seen is a couple of footprints. And that is it. And if I had to guess, I would say that's probably the Daffron's footprints from last week. <laughs> I'm glad they uh, made a mention of this on their um, page. It was on the uh, Kananaskis Trails page. That's always a good resource for stuff. If you're looking for stuff in the mountains, I mean, you can look on all this all trails crap and all that. I don't, I don't trust all trails because a lot of those trails and routes and that were laid down by people that A, didn't really know where they were going, took routes and they laid them down as the official route when they actually they're not. And sometimes those routes are actually quite dangerous. Some of those places that you look at and you're like, holy crap people you know it's uh, not everybody is a mountain goat so you have to bear in mind that people that follow those trails are everyday hikers they're not you know they're not mountain goats so uh, this is the best way to do it is just wander around the daffrins have some amazing information in their books well worth a read yeah i've uh, found all kinds of places thanks to those guys yeah and i'm heading down straight into the forest right along this ridge straight down across there so follow the ridge and back into the trees all right when you come down off the hill you're going to come down that way follow this trail along here along that ridge you'll see this nice little gap between this little bit of forest here like i say this five weed must have looked absolutely stunning and this was uh, all red must have been really really nice look at it i bet you next year this is going to look really really good it takes a few years for that stuff to really build up, but when it does, it just becomes amazing. Yeah. Ooh, one of the little trees. So you're going to come back down through here. Basically going to follow it down and around. Very easy to follow this bit. This bit's getting quite well worn in here. So. Like I say, any, any trail that people use, it... Uh, it very quickly becomes self-evident. There's little stands, they leave these little stands of trees here. Hey, they make good windbreaks, they make good shelter for animals and what have you. But also good nursery trees for seeds and stuff. So, uh, yeah, you're going to head back across here. And right at the far side of here, somebody's put up a nice big bit of orange tape right in the trees there. You can see all these ends have been cut off. But, uh, that's nice. Head back across this way and uh, back into the forest all right so i'm back into the forest basically where you go is straight across this way you can see there's some orange tape on the trees here because straight across this way kind of zigzaggy a bit up through the trees up through that gap up across that ridge and where you're heading is right there so now i'm back into the forest i've got this nice rocky ridge along here to explore i'm going to explore some more of that that's for certain yeah, that's really nice. But if you look through here, there's a lot of older pink tape. And I think this was the original route for straight up that hill. 
So this, this is some uh, very old tape there. That, yeah. yeah. I won't remove it yet because people are obviously still using it. Yeah. Oh, this was that slabby bit that I came up. Let's see if I can find a better way off of this slab. There we go. Oh, jump down that hole. <laughs> yes, it's not much of a rock, but it's enough of a rock. It's a, yeah, it looks like a little bench there. Look at that. Somebody's made a rock bench. They didn't form like that. Somebody's put those there. Yeah, probably for a step. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Right, so I'm going to continue down through here, back into the forest. This is a really nice bit of forest, this bit. And you know what's even better? Is I know that from here on down, it's all downhill. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the good thing. You, you struggle coming up in the morning, and it's a bit hard work and all that. But then you get to come down and enjoy all this. Lovely, isn't it? I'm going to check out some of this ridge along the side here in a bit and uh, see what I find. Nice. Somebody piled up some rocks there. Yeah, right. I'm going to uh, continue down the trail and I'll do some more later. Right, a bit further down in the forest. That's an amazing rock band just off to my side. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anywhere that you can actually get a view from there. Well, looking at it, I don't think there is. But I will continue to wend my way through the trees. Wending is always good. <laughs> Fighting your way through them in a blizzard, not so good. What a lovely trial. I have to admit, I do like this. I'm not so keen on the first bit. Mind you, the other end of... Uh, what's name? Uh, Hunchback Hills. I'm not so keen on that first bit either because that's quite a bit of steep up as well. But this is actually very pleasant. I will certainly take this. It's very similar, like I was saying earlier, to um, 70 Buck Hill, uh, Deer Ridge. They're literally just the other side of the valley from where I am now. You know, two or three kilometres as the crow flies straight across. I'm going to see if I can find junction, that Y junction, was just around here somewhere. And he uh, laid out a, another trail off to the side. But bear in mind, there are lots of trails up in here. They don't all go to just the one place. So, yeah. This pink tape, once you get up into this bit, this is the stuff to follow. I'm thoroughly enjoying this walk. More so now that it's downhill, of course. <laughs> the, the walk back is always nice. You just have to watch your footing on the rocks. This is a, I have to cut back some of this on the way up here. This, this stuff, I don't, I don't know what this is. This stuff grows insanely fast. So I always cut some of that back. Every time I walk through a trail that's got some of that on it, I always cut some back. It, uh, because that stuff will grow across the trail and you'll lose a trail very, very, very quickly. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that it turns into, that. And then people come up here and they go, well, now where do I go? And they end up in the middle of that lot. And uh, tall brush like that is not always a good place to be because you don't know what else is in there. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to walk, avoid walking through tall brush like that. Yeah. They're big fuzzy friends with murder paws. They tend to live in places like that. So I, uh, I tend to avoid that. Yeah. Mind you, if they hear you coming, which is another reason for rabbiting, that's another reason why I'm doing this bit of video, is uh, they will hear you long before you even know that they're there. And if they're not bothered by you, they will just sit there nice and quietly, and you won't even know they're there. Yeah. Generally speaking, you only really have trouble with bears and stuff like that when you surprise them. or they're eating on a carcass or whatever and you turn up they see you as a threat to their food supply and uh, that's not good because they will chase you off <laughs> they're not trying to kill you they're just trying to get you away from their food yeah so always bear that in mind if you're ever in the mountains and you come across a carcass leave the area immediately 
do not stand around looking at it going oh look there's a dead deer yeah because now you begin to smell like dead deer and that's not a good thing yeah especially as most things hunt in the mountains by the sense of smell and as i've mentioned before in my videos a bare sense of smell makes a, a bloodhound look like a pure amateur absolute amateur this ridge off to my side I keep looking through the trees to see if there's anywhere that I can actually see out across the valley and unfortunately there isn't at the moment if I find one I'll do some video of it right I've been looking along this ridge see if there's anywhere I can actually get a view and uh, that's about it really it's, uh, it's a lot of forest down that way Yates Mountain Yates Mountain's off over there in the distance that one with the steep vertical side off to the right of it that's Yates that clear color rock bit that you can see at the bottom that's uh, Prairie View that will be absolutely slammed with people up there today guarantee it that will be full of people people everywhere yeah. which is why I'm not there I'm up here but just off the trail where those rocks are this is what it's all like it's all like this there's, there's no like cliff edge where you can get a nice view but it's uh that is my view out across there still a very nice view i'll take that that is stunning is that big cloud out there it's nice isn't it i just had a helicopter fly down the valley so that means the tourists are busy that's good that's good for everybody yeah tourism is very important around here it's very very important which is why i i i've spoken to people that have been here from all over the world and the one thing that i've heard from people is yes it's a lovely place to come they enjoy being here they like being here but everything is so expensive you have to pay for everything and it's it's becoming a a problem now society seems to be that you've got to pay for everything yeah you've got to pay for this you've got to pay to drive down this road you've got to with the kenny tax as we have now just to walk around these mountains it's just absolute garbage <laughs> thank goodness the guy's out of office best thing he can ever done is got out of office because he's useless so is his predecessor or his uh successor sorry she's bloody useless as well but uh, all of this belongs to the people of Alberta and all the time you keep making people pay for stuff like this tourists aren't going to come they come once and that is it they don't come back and I've heard that I do photography all over the world and I have heard this from people time and time and time again yes it's a nice place glad I went there but I'm not going back because it's too expensive that is just ridiculous you know after covid everything just went up I, like i say i used to stay at the bamp springs i go up there for the weekend or spend a few days up there lovely but even with my alberta discount now it's so expensive i don't go anymore and i'm not going to go anymore because it's now too expensive it's just ridiculous and then in the next breath they're saying hey you know what can we do to encourage tourism uh, maybe don't gouge the crap out of all the tourists that might be the best place to start yeah so uh, yes you make a little bit of money once but you never make it again and unfortunately then once people don't come back that's it you've lost those tourists forever so now the people that make these decisions need to think on about that stuff because it's actually very very important right i'm going to stop waffling i'm going to head back over this rocky ridge here as you can see this is all uh, rubbly junk Ooh, this is all busted limestone gotta be careful walking on this stuff because i was hoping that's what i've been doing i've been walking on this ridge the trail is actually just off to my right now I've been walking along this ridge hoping to find a, a good place to uh, stop and get a view maybe and what have you. Look at that, that's nice. Now that makes a nice picture. Excellent. So I'm just ambling along here, seeing what I can find. I can see why the trail's not up here, because ugh, I couldn't really make a very good trail along the top of here at all. <laughs> It's still cobweb o'clock as well, which is never good. Right, I need to head back down onto my trail before I get too far along here. Because I know this end was steeper. So the further I go along, the steeper I have to go down. So, <laughs> right, let me find a way down off of this ridge. And I'll do some more in a bit. Right, back down the trail a bit further. This is what I call a, a gravity assist trail. Really steep, steeper than it looks. That's why I'm pitch and stepping. But uh, this is a gravity assist trail, and you need just the right amount of gravity. Too much gravity, you fall over, hurt yourself, hurts as you bounce down the forest. Not good. So you have to regulate the gravity output. 
that over on this side I still have that rock band on that side so it's, uh, I shall lose the rocks here in a mow and then uh, I'll be back into the really steep bit and that really steep bit is the bit that I wish I had my hiking pole with me as you can see I don't <laughs> right, as I was saying before my battery died <laughs> but be careful of gravity assist you need just the right amount of gravity not too much not too little yeah but I can honestly say I am very much enjoying this walk down the hill because I remember what a struggle it was getting up here right so this is that big rock this is the first big rock that you come to as you're going up the trail and then from here on up it actually from this rock upwards it's actually fairly you know it's almost an amble it's pretty good this bit from here downwards tends to be a bit steeper so it's uh, not so keen on that bit so that's tough on the knees on the way down yeah sometimes i find it actually easier going up a steep hill than going down a steep hill what i am doing is look look at this uh, i do a lot of backcountry camping and uh, look at that for firewood oh my god yeah <laughs> That is just so much firewood, it's not funny. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You'd be camping here for a month of Sundays and you still wouldn't run out of firewood. Yeah. Very nice. Right. Beautiful day. I'm going to jinx it now. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I haven't seen a single solitary person at all. Yeah. That is the uh, cue for 50 people to be coming up the hill. That's what usually happens. Whenever I say, you don't see many people on this trail, suddenly there's uh, 50,000 people, just me and my shadow walking down the hill. Somebody's cleared out a lot of this fairly recently. There's a lot of fresh saw cuts in that here. Yeah. A lot of old ones too. So this this is part of the old trail, I'm sure it is. And it, uh, the new bit is off over there. So I can see, is this where I saw that orange? Yeah, it is. Right. I'll show you what I saw here. This is the bit that I've just followed that came all the way down from the top. And what I can see over there is a whole bunch more tape. And I'm not sure what that's for. I don't know whether they're laying out a different trail through there. I don't know, but there is some more tape up through there. Not sure what that is, but it, uh, it's not the way I came. So either way, I'm going back down the trail that I came, which is this way, and it's a very nice trail. So I don't know where that goes. There is one that goes along the, the side of the hill there, but I don't want to go that way. So I'm going to head straight down. Okay, figured out the mystery. The tape that I could see off through the trees is actually the tape I should be following down. This is the new trail. That little piece, probably 100 yards over there, was the old trail. And I know where that goes. That comes out almost opposite the... Uh, the pond where people go fishing there, I can't remember the name, it's a bull pond or whatever it's called. So this is obviously the new trail. So somewhere just up there, it kind of peters off around the corner. So this is the piece I came up. You can see by the copious amounts of orange tape. And this seems to be the new trail that they're cutting. So I will stick to the new trail and go from there. All right, this was the only bit that was a little bit vague on this trail because all the greenery is growing up around it. Just like a little gully in here. But, uh, I'm losing elevation fast here because this is steep. The last thing in that was in here. I did cut a bunch of them back when I came up. Don't like stinging out. Although you can actually use them for a lot of things. Yeah, all these are stinging out, right? So you can actually use these for a lot of things. Personally, I try to avoid them. Yes. You can make all kinds of cordage and all kinds of good stuff out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that bit's a bit wet, isn't it? Right, yeah, that was the only bit that was a little bit vague on the trail. And I think as people uh, walk across it, there's some tape up there so you can clearly see. But as people use it and walk across it, it will uh, become more trodden in. Right, back into the shade now. I've been out in the sun for a bit, so it's a bit warm out there. But uh, now I'm back in the shade. It's nice. This is the new bit of the trail that they're making. You can see this piece has been freshly cut out. Uh, all the way up in here there's all kinds of like pickaxes and tools and stuff so I'm assuming this is a, a work in progress but they're certainly making good progress this is a nice trail yeah. amazing you get some people walk it 
but uh, you can dig out a trail like this you can see where they benched out the, the side there and put all the material on the side here which is good it creates a flat tread but it's uh i tell you once you get people walking on it that really makes a difference because they're squashing all the rocks take that one they're squashing all the rocks makes a good solid tread yeah must admit coming down here it's very nice like i say gravity assist is good i like that don't want too much of it though yeah this is at the stop for a water break i remembered i hadn't drunk enough water yeah you start to get stumbly i found a bunch of tree roots on here that i've had to cut out as well it, uh, i tripped over a bunch on the way up and i remembered where they were so there was some uh, small tree roots only about a quarter inch three eighths i guess round so let me tell you those things will pull you over near the road down the bottom yeah so uh, i'm really really back on the road yeah i have to say the more people that use this trail the better it will get so if you've never done this trail this is the uh, hunchback hills from highway 68 like the um Sibald area there the Sibald fishing pond is literally just down the road from where i parked the uh but you could just walk up the side here i did find it hard i looked on google maps i did find it hard to actually see the um, beginning of the trail not very well marked you have to pretty much park where the sign is there's a blue sign on the north side of the road that tells you where the park is uh, the, the pond for fishing if you uh, park along there and then just walk down heading west you don't have to walk very far you'll find the beginning of this trail i suspect they'll mark it up better when it's done but it actually uh, I, I drove up and down the road a couple of times looking for it i had tony's measurements he said 30 meters one way and 50 meters the other way for the steep bit mental note if uh, tony says that one way is the steep bit hopefully this isn't the steep one because it'd be a bit naffed off if there was a, a a shallower way up this valley i know the way the old trail is the old trails further down that way but it uh i'm not sure oh hang on what have we got here not sure what that is that looks like one of them stupid vape bloody things well that doesn't belong on the trail so we will get rid of that that can go in the garbage yeah yes obviously fell out of somebody's pocket i guess yeah. but if it was the people that were building the trail i'll let you off because you're doing a damn good job <laughs> yeah look at this this is so nicely done like I said, the, uh, people usually do the other end of these hills because it's, uh, it's easy to get to at certain times of the year. Uh, but this one you can get to all year round. And the more people that use it, the better it will get. Now I can see the road down the bottom there. Wow, that is steep. Yeah, straight down there is steep. Yeah. This is more horizontal now. And I seem to remember there was a little bit of horizontal before heading down the hill. Oh yeah, that's steep. That's full on gravity assist down that way. That's almost a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice and cool in here. That sun out there today. When I set off this morning, it was only about eight degrees. So it was actually very nice for walking weather. It, uh, I think they said it was gonna to get to 20 somewhat. But I can tell you now, I mean, if you look up that hill, it gives you an idea of how steep that is. I don't know if that will come out very well on the camera, but that's almost a hands and feet job to get up there. But, uh, that's why they've put all these zigzags in, I guess. You walk further with zigzags, but it's uh, less strain, way less strain. Yeah. Right. I will uh, put this away until I get down the bottom and do some more when I get to the beginning of the trail. Okay. I just spotted something. That way is the way I went. Has all the orange tape. Had I come down the way that I normally would have come down that's the old route right there literally let's get out the sun that's the old route 
you are bloody kidding me so there's a, a new route that they've cut that way which is steep i'll give them that but that one goes up the side of the, this one goes up through the bottom of the gully that is actually the way i should have gone but uh that is the old route i can still see lots of deadfall across the trail in that up there so maybe they're rerouting the trail to a, a more zigzag friendly trail but straight up there this is almost back at the road right this is an old logging road you can see this the road goes down there the trail back to the parking is down that way so it, uh yeah so <laughs> so i did apparently go up the steep bit that piece there and they've brushed all that out so my guessing is that they're uh, turning that into a new trail because that piece there is uh, the old one if i'd have come straight down the hill that's where i'd have come down but there's some nice zigzags up through there they're, they're cutting out some nice benches and uh, nice zigzags up through there I'm almost at the road, I can hear traffic down the road here just ahead of me. It, uh, this is the only problem, when you come up the trails like this and it's still pitch black really. It's pretty dark when I got here this morning. I missed that turn off for the, uh, the original trail. And I could see they'd cut all the, the new stuff that was all cut and all the tree stumps were cut and marked and all the rest of it. There's a huge amount of uh, orange ticker tape that goes all the way up the hill. So uh, I'm assuming they are going to reroute that trail that'd be my guess because uh, that other bit is a bit like this it's a bit steep now this will take me down onto the road uh, again this is pigeon stepping all the way down here steep bit all the way down there right so i'll put this away until i get to the bottom right heading back down towards the road I'm not very far from. This is obviously where they've rerouted it. You yeah, can see all this has been freshly cut. This is uh, way less steep. The other down way to the road is really steep, like really steep. But, uh, this uh, they've obviously just rerouted this piece around here. But there are some bits up in there that, uh, as you go up this trail, just up around the corner, you'll uh, come to that piece. There's like a four-way turn off you can turn you can go straight on which looks like that's where they've daisy changed the uh, changed the orange uh, ticker tape all the way up the hill that looks like that's the trail that they want people to use and the uh, the other way it goes off is uh, the old trail i suspect looks like it yeah so i'm almost back at the road so i'm just gonna uh, put this away and do some more when i get there all right and here i am back down the trail that's where you need to go in, literally right there. There's a white post here with a bit of red tape on it. The pond, uh, fishing pond, is just up there where that yellow sign is almost. And the uh, sign for the pond is just here. Yeah. That sign over there. Go to where you need to go. So this looking from the top of that hill this road doesn't look very big does it you got what, one two three four you could even have easily have five lanes here so where you need to turn off by this sign this sign is on the north side of the road but uh, there is a steep way that goes in that way which i wouldn't recommend because it is insanely steep and then if you just walk up the road here a little bit it's a new trail it's not well trodden yet so but if you just come up this road just a little way plenty of parking on the side of the road here just down there there's some flagging in the trees there's a white post there with a bit of red flag on it and uh, that's where your fun begins right there all the way to the top of uh, east hill of hunchback hills all right that'll do for now thanks for coming along that as my closeout. Thanks for coming along for the trip.